one. What's good, y'all? This is Jay Claude Bowden here from Who Dreams NYC. Welcome to episode four of That Juco Life, featuring Jamel Horton, Queen's own. Man, what's going on? Uh, my guy, what's going on, man? Appreciate you having me. Good, man. I had to have you because I know your story is very unique. A um, long story and people need to know about it. So let's start things off with Jamel Horton uh, transitioning from high school to college. What was that like? Uh, all right. So high school, like, it was kind of like I was always like – it was like I was always good – but never good enough to be top tier, you know, like, especially with guys like Marquise Noel, Isaiah Washington, Jose, like, I didn't have the type of high school career they had. But as far as, like, as far as, like, the competition level, people always, like, you know, like, show me that type of love. Like, yo, you just as good as them. You could compete with them. I just didn't have that type of career. Like, right. and a lot, a lot of it had to do with me. I didn't have the mentality I have now. Like, I, right. was, I was more... As far as a basketball player, I was more humble back then. Like now, right. I'm more like more raw. Like let's get to it. Let's let's get gritty. Right. Like you know. So, but um, after high school, I went to um. I at first what I was gonna do, I was gonna go to a JUCO upstate. I was talking to the coach from Genesee and Erie. Right. So then somebody had brought the prep school option like around to me or whatever. So it was basically like, okay, I don't gotta use a year of college and I could still get four years of D one. Right. Like, I never heard of Notre Dame Prep, never heard of that prep league, never heard of Fitchburg, Massachusetts, but it was like, yo, another opportunity to go D1 without using eligibility? Let's do it. But we're going to take that chance. We out. So I went there. And um, you want to hear about how I went there or what? Yeah, talk about the prep, prep life briefly, how that went, and how you ended up in uh, at Seward County. And then we're going to transition to the Seward County because I know there's a lot with that. So just tell me about – um. The prep life first. I bet. The prep, I, when we first got there, all we was doing was playing open runs. Right. So this is when my mentality started to change. I'm like, I, I spent four years of high school being being the nice guy, being the good guy, you know, holding back. Right. So now I, I'm like, yo, I got a new opportunity. I'm around 12 other kids from other states. They don't know me. I don't know them. So I got I to gotta go crazy. I got to, you know, set, I got to set the tone. So we was having open runs in front of um, like coaches. Coaches was coming every day. We had like workout and the open runs. I was doing my thing. Like coaches were talking to me every day. Like mm-hmm. I ain't getting no offers, but it was like, like it, I was an eye opener every day. I stood up every day. So that was like I was going well for me when I first got there. I was excited about that. But then when the season started, being that we was a team full of guards and me being six four, I I'm a point guard. I couldn't play point guard. I never once played point guard in those days. Bro. I was playing like the four or five, like. I'm out here setting screens and playing the baseline. So it was just, it was just like a bad fit, but that's kind of my fault for not doing my research. You know, I just jumped into the situation. Right. So long story short, we go through the prep season and all the inches I had died out. I never had like a breakout game. I was playing the full season. It was like, it was just, it was just, it was a bad fit the whole way. Oh, and that's when, um, the option of going to Seward County came up. So let's transition into Seward, Seward County. Uh, you was there, you played for a year for some time, and then you actually left. So explain to me what that chapter was like in your life with, with Seward County. Seward, uh, at that point, I was still I was still positive. Like when I got to Seward, I'm like, all right, cool. Prep school didn't work, had to go Juco. It's all love, it's all good, let's do it. So jumped into the Juco life. And I appreciate um, Coach Jason saw that sort because he he's hardcore. Like he's he he don't play. His practices is hard, workouts is hard. Like so, I kind of embraced it. I'm like, okay, I never mind working hard. I never mind playing hard. He was a defensive coach. I love playing defense. I'm like, yo, this this has to work. So I'm doing what I got to do. I'm more so working on like my jump shot, my point guard skills. This is my first year in college, so it's like right, everything's a little faster. Got to really learn how to run the pick and roll, that type of thing. But as far as, like, the defense, the help, the talking, that type of thing that he liked, I had no – I was already on that. So, right. my eye, this seems like a good fit. Seems like a better situation. And he saw that I was in the gym. I was actually working on my weaknesses, you know? Right. So, it was cool. It was all love, like, preseason. Season started, and we had a new team. Every last player on the team was a new player. So, right. it was like a clean slate. So, I ended up starting the first game, 
And from there, I'm like, I started the first game on the team for the new players. Like, this team is, like, it's going good. But then four or five games in, now I'm playing less and less. And I might play 30 minutes one game, play four minutes the next game. Like, it's, it was just never any consistency. And if you ask me, I never saw no production, like, roller coaster. You know, like, I never saw, like, okay, you played bad last game, so you played less this game. You played better, so you get more minutes. It was just random, like. I never understood it. It never made sense to me. Right. But like it's games. It's games. I get in there. I might get four straight. I might get two layups back to back. Then I get subbed. Then I sit for the rest of the game. So that's when I started to get confused. Like, okay, now I don't, I don't see what's going on. I stayed positive for a while. Like the first seven, eight games. I, a couple games I didn't play much. I'm like, you know, it's all good. We're just gonna keep working, do what we gotta do. Right. But then after a while, it started to take a toll on me mentally. I started checking out. Stopped going to the gym as much. And then, like, towards the end of the season, as the season trickled down, I just stopped caring. Stopped caring. And I, I know that certain situations like that where playing can really affect you and be like, it, it starts to, you know, that's when your your dedication gets questioned. But sometimes, somehow you actually, you know, fought through it. And, you know, was it easy, you know, leaving Seward County and going to Pratt? Because they're in the same state and also in the same conference, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, definitely the same conference. Um, that's the thing. Like, I don't know. I think a lot of people got the story misconstrued. When I left Seward, I didn't have no intentions on going to Pratt. None right. at all. Right. No intentions on going to Pratt. I was home the whole summer without a school calling me. A school, no school texting me, no school calling mm. me. I was not involved in no recruitment. I was not really working on my game basketball-wise. All I was doing was working out body-wise. I was doing push-ups, pull-ups, dips at the park. Six, 7 a.m. every day. And, right. and that was just... Off the strings that I didn't want to sit on the couch. But as far as basketball, I did not. That summer, I did not care for basketball. I I barely worked out that summer, basketball wise. Well, and that's something that a lot of some players don't really get to talk about. Like you kind of fell out of love with the game. Absolutely. I'm thinking like, what got you? What got you more involved before Pratt came calling in? You wanted to go in there. Uh, my guy, Rebel, he's cool with the coach at Pratt. Rebel's a scout from, from Queens. He just always showed me love, always, always like, talked to me. Like, that's just been my guy since high school. Right. So, um, this, is, this, is now, this is now, like, August. Like, you know, August when everybody's leaving. Oh, yeah. I'm still home. Like, no intentions on going to school, nothing. Right. Rebel, he didn't tell me he was going to do it. I found out it was through Rebel after the fact. But what happened on my end, I get a call one day. It's maybe, like, a Sunday or a Wednesday, whatever, whatever it was. It was Sunday and Wednesday. I know that. I think it was a, a Wednesday and the coach from Pratt called me. He was like, yo, da 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 we know you came from Seward, da 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 we like you, this, that, and the third. We need you out here by Wednesday. So now I'm like, I'm like, yo, so basically you're telling me you need me to pack up and come to Kansas in four days. Like, wow. I'm like, I'm like, hell no, I'm not doing that. But then I talked to my pops. I talked to a couple people that I confided in or whatever. And even still, like, I took their opinions in. They were telling me, yo, we probably should go. We should think about it, da 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 But I'm so out of tune with basketball, I'm not hearing it. Like, yo, I'm not going back to Kansas. I'm not joining no basketball team. I'm not doing it. I don't care about none of that. None of that. So now the day of my flight comes, 12.30 in the afternoon, he calls me, and I still said no. Like, yo, I'm not coming. Like, I'm, like I appreciate it. I wasn't being disrespectful. Now. I'm telling you, I appreciate it. I really, like, thank you for reaching out, but I'm just not coming. So then kept talking to my dad, my uncle, one of my coaches, my sister. Next thing you know, 2.30, I'm on my way to the airport. A half a bag packed. I didn't even get to really pack. Like, I had a, I went to work out that morning. That, and it's funny because I wasn't working out that whole summer, but something made me work out that, that morning. Right. So I wasn't just home packing. Like, I was out. I get back home, and it's just like, you know what? All right, fuck it, I'm going. I just packed and left. And it wasn't even like I wanted to go. It was just... So many people in my ear telling me, like, and I'm glad they did tell me. That's the thing. At the time, I wasn't glad. But now that I look back on it, it was like, yo, they were telling me the right thing. Like, yo, go. Forget basketball. You still go get a degree. Like, you got to handle your business, you know? Like, get out the house. Like, nothing here. Right. Oh, me, I'm just so frustrated. I'm like, you know what? Like, everybody get on my nerves. I don't want to hear this no more. I'm going. I don't want to hear nobody mouth. Leave me alone. So I packed a half a bag, and I went to the airport. Um, So you get to practice. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Pratt coach, he's been to New York before, right? I think yeah. he's been to New York. And I think he drove up here 
to yeah, he, my, my guy, he he's crazy. He'll drive here, definitely. He draw. I think fourteen hours. Yeah, he drives like his recruiting trips. He drives. I like, think I have seen him at ISA before. Yes, definitely. Yo, he yeah. That that salute to him because to keep yourself motivated through that year, you had to sit out. Um. See, that's why the um the coach from Pratt, Sean Flynn, he he's a real one. He told me ahead of time. Yo, I'll be honest. Seward is in our league. It's a rule. You may have to sit out. So that's another reason I wasn't trying to go. I'm like, so you're telling me I got to come back to Kansas to not play? I'm like, hell no. Right. But I ended up going cool. So when I first got there, you know, Tyler Bourne was there. Right. So he that right. helped out a lot, too. My boy Tyler just, he's just good energy, great energy. Like, yo, come on, man, we got to do what we got to do. You know where we're from. Like, just reminded me, like, just to stick with it, you know. So that kept me going in practice. I started to get my groove back. I was killing in practice for a while. So that's when me and Coach Flynn really clicked, like, okay, this guy's letting me hoop, and then he see, oh, this kid is playing hard, he's doing what I need him to do. Right. So that's when it became like, yo, we got to try to get a waiver. We're going to try to get you to play. So now I hear that. I'm like, wow, this guy's trying to get me a waiver to play after he told me I might not be able to. Now I'm excited again. Now I'm, I'm back in tune with it. Like, yeah. okay, it's starting to make sense. Like, this, this is love. But come to find out, I couldn't play, and then – it just all went left again. Like, my mental was all – I was out of it again. Like, oh, I can't play. Uh, now I don't want to be here. Every other day I'm thinking about going home. I'm waking up mad. I, it was a point I stopped going to practice, stopped going to weight room just because I was mad. I didn't want nothing to do with basketball. Nothing. Hmm. And I know that that has to be tough because, you know, when you take basketball away from someone, many people may not know how to, like, you know, cope with it. But, I mean, you stayed the course and it's paying off. You know, you, you get eligible, have a breakout year. So, you know, you're coming across a lot of players in the Jayhawk Conference. Most of them are from New York. So tell me what it's like playing in the Jayhawk Conference. Uh, playing in the Jayhawk Conference? It's like coming from New York. You know how it is in New York. We got so much undercover talent, so it's always tough. Like, even if you're not playing against a big name, right. you're, liable, you're liable to run into an underdog where it's like, yo, this kid is tough. Right. So – as far as that, it's like, I don't think, I don't think, like, the J-Hope Conference surprised me talent-wise. Because, like I said, coming from New York, you see talent. That's, but what you do see in the J-Hope Conference, you see, like, Division One players, like, as far as, like, body-wise, right. athleticism, that type of thing. Like, and then it's, like, good team. So you might have a team. They're not all D1 players, but he could do this. He could do this. This kid is good. This kid is good. So... It's right. like it's like real basketball. It's no like you like you're not just gonna walk into J Hope average thirty and get up out of there. Like yeah. you're gonna run into some tough games. Like like we beat we beat Hutch in double overtime at our school. We went to Hutch. They changed the game plan. They did what they had to do. They made adjustments. They beat us by twenty five. Wow, wow. Like this is real. You get what I'm saying? This is real basketball. It's like it's it's strategic. The coaches is good. It's tough, definitely. So moving right along, Saquon Singleton, give you your respect on episode two where he talked about, you know, you was the toughest player he went up against. Could you say the same about him? Or is there someone else in doing your Juco career that you went up against that's like, like yo, like, oh, he, 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 he's like that? All right, I'm going to have to get back in him. I have to step my game up. Anytime you face him, I'm going to make sure I'm going to have a great game against him. Like, who's that player? It was – Saquon's definitely one of them. Let me, let me say that first. Like, right. and a lot of people, right. a lot of people front on Saquon because he's not flashy. He's not this big time scorer. Right. He gets it done. Oh, he, definitely. He gets it done. Right. He's he's effective. He knows how to play basketball. He, he's a, right. he's a winning player. He right. he definitely knows how to help win. But it's definitely he's one of them. And then there's this kid from Kobe Community College. He committed to Northern Missouri. Some it's school in Missouri. That's where he's from. Um, Demarcus Sharp. He's tough. Okay. He's tough. It, it, he's, he's tough to the point where I'm talking about we played against them. He's scoring. I'm scoring. We guarding each other. We're talking like he'd score, and I, I tell him that like, I was tough. I score. He's like, yo, good move, zero. Like, and it's just respect. We play, playing hard. We both going at it, and right. that's just how it was. Like, that. Right. Crazy. I mean, uh, very competitive times in the Juco Conference. So shifting gears a little bit. Uh, CJ Kelly. Now, what's crazy is the first time I seen y'all guys play was IS8. And y'all won the championship together with Beacon Elite. Y'all mm -hmm. beat Northeast. It was a stacked team. You know, they had 
a lot of good players in that squad. Javon Quinley, a couple others, you know, all Americans and all. And you guys, you was the MVP, and I think he was the player of the year, if I'm not mistaken, it was all the way around. No, that's it, that's it. So how did he end up coming from Pratt? Because he played at Norfolk State to start things mm-hmm. off. Then all of a sudden he's at Pratt, you know. Did you play some part in the recruitment of him? Or, you know, he he kind of figured out, all right, this is where I want to go to get back on track to go back to D1. No, I, I I definitely had a part in it. Like, it wasn't, like, me who made the decision, but about CJ and CJ trying to transfer, however that went, I didn't play no part in that. Mm-hmm. Only part I played, once my coach brought it to my attention, like, yo, you know CJ Kelly? Like, like I think he's looking to transfer, this, that, and the third. So now I'm like, what? He's looking to transfer. You Like, we need him. Like, don't don't sleep on that. We need him. He's right. He's special. Like, we need him. So then I get on the phone with CJ, and – Anytime one of my guys is talking about coming to my school, the first thing I tell them, bro, you got to do what's best for you. If coming to play with me at my school is not what's best for you, don't do it. Right. But, and then after you get into the pros and cons, and, and then you always got to think, like, bro, I'm here, so we good. Like, you know, you got you to gotta somebody with you that's going to play. Like, like you, know, you know what we did, at, like, back in high school. So right. that, that played a part, and then he ended up coming. All right, and that proved well for you guys because now – and I'm going to sound biased here because I'm an alum, class of 2013. Now you guys will be playing at UAlbany. Mm-hmm. Now how did that, how did UAlbany come about? You know, what were some other schools that were recruiting you and what made you choose UAlbany to be that, that school that you want to play in? Congrats, by the way. Uh, appreciate it. Um, okay. Other schools recruiting me. Uh, I, I saw the schools that didn't offer, I guess. Um, I heard from Portland, Chicago State, FI. You, Longwood, uh, what was I heard from? Maryland, Eastern Shore, Maine, uh, damn, um, Thank God Hartford. God. Like, I heard, I, <laughs> I, I heard from a bunch of schools, but you know how that go, like, when they just reaching out, just, like, that's not really much. But, um, the way it happened, I had a town to offer since last summer when I played in some Juco Showcase. Right. They wasn't really, like, actively recruiting me, you know? Like, they offered me, but it wasn't, like, I don't know. It, it just wasn't like they really, really wanted me, you know? Like, right. so fast forward after the season this year, um, what was that? When did, when did I commit? I think, I don't know, April, May, April, March, whenever it was, Albany, they first offer. Head coach called me one morning. He offered me. And from the time they, first of all, before they offered me, like, two weeks before that, they was like, it started to get active. Like, you know, they was calling me kind of often, checking in. Right. We scheduled the visit, but then uh, the pandemic happened or whatever, so I couldn't visit. They was just like, so I, I was speaking to them a lot prior to the offer. So they ended up offering. And from the time they offered me, head coach, assistant, they just kept checking in, showing love, this, that, and the third. Like, it was right. just love off the rip. So when I got my other offers, obviously, you got to weigh your options. And I wanted to wait a little while, but... Albany just was such a good fit to me. Like, you know, you know, you start on point guard. Um, I met, I forgot his full name, but I met, he's leaving. I met Clark. Clark. I met Clark. Yeah, there yeah, he is. He played at Hutch. Yeah, in fact. I'm out of Clark. I'm out of Clark. Now I'm at, I'm out of so, Clark. With him leaving and then me, like, being a junior, they kept stressing the fact that, yo, like, we could use a, a older guard to step in right away. We got a void to fill. So, like I said, in my head, I wanted to wait, have some more options to think about, but. They were showing so much love, and the fit seemed so good. It was like, why wait at this point? Like, let's just get signed and sit. Right. And you brought CJ with you, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. So, like, I, I kind of, like, anytime, you know, like, my alma mater can get, you know, some city kids in there, it kind of makes me, you know, appreciate the school and the team even more. And I do know that Will Brown and Coach Petlier and the rest of the staff, they're good at getting, you know, good Juco players. Mm-hmm. Like, we've had Juco players in the past, like DJ Evans and a couple others in the past that have came in and really impact and made them a contender. So, I mean, congratulations again. You and CJ going there. Like, did CJ just decide, yo, I'm going to go over there with you? Or, like, they was also giving him – they were also recruiting him well as, as well? Um, they weren't recruiting him at first. Right. Um, the way it happened, they like while they recruited me, they told me their whole little situation. Down. They had a scholarship for a wing. Yeah. 
So what I did, you know, I'm trying to, obviously I want help. Like, like when I go there, I want help. I want guys I know that can hoop that's going to help me play hard, right. you know, that type of thing. And I also want to like put my guys in position to get a look. I can't control if they get the offer, but you know, that like you want to help your guys out that you feel deserve it. So right. when they said they need a wing, the two people I thought of, Elias Essenekwe and CJ Kelly. Right. So all I did was like, you know, throw the name out there. Like coach, if you're looking for a wing, I know two real good wings. Right. And then, you know, you explain the games like, oh, Elias, real athletic, strong guard, CJ, finesse, scorer, plays defense, length. Like that's all I did. And I left it at that. Like I didn't, Try to force the issue. Like, I put the name out there. If they want to look into it, they look into it. I did what I feel my part is, like, you know? So, long story short. And then it's funny because the head coach, Will Brown, he played college basketball with CJ's dad. Wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah, so now it's starting to come together. Like, okay, his son went to school with a kid we just signed. I went to school with his dad. Like, it just it started to piece together. Right. Really short, CJ hit. I told CJ what I did, and then CJ hit me one day, like, yo, I was speaking, speaking to the coach. Boom, boom, days go by, days go by, and he tells me what they offer. Right. That's big. And that's and, that. and with him coming off an ACL injury, his recruitment was down. So for them to offer him off a, after a season he didn't play, right. it was like, yo, that's love. That's, that's right. you know, they're investing. Wow. That's that Queens Long Island connection, man, because Will Brown is from Long Island. Mm hmm. And he used to coach Juco at Sullivan. So that Queens, Long Island, Juco connection is big. One of his former assistants, who's also an alum, um, Brent Wilson, is also a, a, um, a coach, the head coach at Sullivan. So, like, that connection, you know, that Queens, Long Island, Juco connection is real. And um, I definitely will be at some games next season. I used to broadcast the team my junior and senior year at U Auburn. Mm -hmm. So, like, and I'll definitely be covering some games. I covered them when they went to St. John's, but I'm definitely going to be covering some games. And I think those Stony Brook, U Albany games is going to be lit. It's going to be mm -hmm. lit between y'all two. That's our rivals right there. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be lit. So um, that's big. So I want to uh, take a different route and talk about something different. I see you have a top class apparel shirt on. Yeah, yeah of course. You know. Let's talk about top class apparel. Um, <laughs> You, you know, you're in college and you're starting your little entrepreneurial thing going on. So tell me about Top Class Apparel. How did it come about? You know, what are you looking to do next with Top Class Apparel? Got some great, great uh, fits. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, I see Top Class, it wasn't just clothes. Like, I right, when we was, when we was like freshmen in high school, you know how it is when you and your boys, y'all young, y'all always together. Mm -hmm. so I just put a little name to it. Like, that's your crew. That's your name. And ours was Top Class. Right. So it was just, it was just love. Like, yo, we all, like, we all top class. This is love. This is our family. This is the guy we be with every day. So that's how that started. And we always talked about, yo, we should make shirts. We should make hats. And then we just never did it. Like, you know, we just literally just never did it. So it's funny. While I was in Seward, once my mom got out of basketball, that's when I was like, all right, I've been saying I want to make shirts and stuff like that. I'm going to just make a whole brand. I'm like, I, like basically, and this is during the season. Like during the season, I'm putting my mind to something. I, I, that's how that's how bad I was messed up as far as basketball. I literally started thinking about this brand while the season was going on. Like, right. So then I got home that summer after I left Seward, and then I just started to do the groundwork. Started to put it together. Oh, one second, somebody at my door. My sister. All right, hold on. All right, go ahead. Continue. Oh, we we ready? All right. Yeah. So um, that's when I started to do groundwork. Um, me and my guys linked up, and we were just talking about how we was going to start it, what we was going to do. The main person helping me was my boy, Steven. Okay. And then, like, from there, we just, you know, put it together. And then we released our first shirts that summer. Um, what was that? August 2018. And then from there, we just been rolling. And um, you said what's my plans with it? Uh, I'm not going to say it's on hold, because I'm still doing it, but, like, like the brand is not going anywhere. Basketball, you know, the the ball stops bouncing. So I'm more focused on basketball right now because I could always get it like tap into the brand. So it's kind of a second tier thing right now. But right. this quarantine was a blessing for it. It gave me a lot of time to do what I had to do, put some work in for it. But like, if you know me, you know, like I often I'm I'm 100% into the fashion. So right, like the 
brand is a big deal for me. So I'm just trying to, you know, level it up, do what I got to do, expand, make it a worldwide thing. I need everybody wearing it. Definitely, definitely. Um, I know y'all don't have big and tall sizes, but, uh, you know, I, I'll definitely... You know, I'm going to get you right. That's You got I'm, my word. I'm going to get you right, big bro. I, I'll cop some pieces. I like to support black-owned businesses and all that. So um, let's close things out and let's talk about, you know, your advice to youth. What are some things you could say to the um, youth, like, what's some advice you can give them, give them your journey, your story and stuff, because um, you are going to be some players in the future from the city and all over who are going to have to, who, who will be taking the Juco route mm-hmm. and, you know, with aspirations of playing D1, D2 or whatever, like, so what is your advice to them? First and foremost, I'm going to say, when you, when you come across hard times as far as basketball, just keep working. No matter what's going on with you, your situation, your coach, as long as you're putting the work in, you're staying sharp, you're getting better, you're doing yourself a favor. Because you're going to get your opportunity at some point. It might not be at that school that year, but when you get back into it, you get your opportunity, you want to be more than ready. You, you want people to know, like, okay, this kid, he has something to prove. Like, oh, like, yeah, like you want to come out the gate swinging. Like. So that's one. And then two, understand that everybody has a job to do. Like, when coaches recruit, they not telling you the whole story. Like if, if they if they if they don't expect you to play your freshman year, if they want you to wait and play your sophomore year, nine times out of ten, they're not gonna tell you that. So right. just, just like understand your situation, like do as much homework as you can. Ask don't be don't be afraid to ask questions. Like like coaches, they can answer your questions. Don't think you can't ask them a question. Like and then do what's best for you. Don't try to ride a wave. Don't go somewhere because they win. Don't go somewhere because this person went. Like you gotta go where's best for you. Right. You Right. Well, I mean, you know, Jamel, man, thank you for this interview. This was a great episode, very inspiring. I'm definitely going to let you know when this uh, comes out after we're done recording. But, man, thank you for this episode, man. For Jaquan Bowden, Jamel Horton, this is episode three of that, episode four, excuse me, of that Juco Life. We out. My God, big queens, I'm out. All right.